Hi foodie friends, Jessica here with Savory Experiments and today we are making the best skillet hamburgers. Cause you know what? All of these great hamburger joints aren't out back flipping burgers on a Weber. They are making them either on a cooktop, cast iron, or in a skillet. And I'm gonna show you how to do the exact same thing. But before we get started, make sure that you like, comment, and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any of our other videos. Let's get going. First things first here, I am going to put on some gloves. So the most magical part of this is the ground beef, of course. In this day and age, everybody tends to go lean, but you know what? To make a really good burger, you actually don't want to go super lean. This is an 80% 20 mix. So that means this is 20% fat. When you hear fat, I don't want you to think that that is a bad thing. The fat is going to provide flavor to your burgers, and it's also going to help them congeal. So you don't need any other binders. If you use something like an egg or a breadcrumb, you're gonna get a texture that's more similar to a meatball or a meatloaf. And meatloaf is really just a giant meatball, right? In the form of a loaf. So if you notice what I'm doing here, I'm taking this and I'm crumbling it up with my hands as it goes into the mixing bowl. Why am I doing that? Because the number one reason that burgers get dry is that the meat is overworked. See, ground beef has a lot more surface space than other types of beef, and it's already been manually tenderized one time when it went through the meat grinder. So it's already been worked over pretty well, and because of all that surface space, it also has the ability to suck up a lot of air, which means that it can dry out the natural juices that are in the meat. So we want to work it as little as possible. So the next thing I'm gonna add is Worcestershire sauce. The number one ingredient that is mispronounced in the United States and worldwide, we are going to use it. So what does it actually do? It has super rich, deep, savory flavors. And it can be added to anything from ground beef, to soups, to salad dressings. I love it in marinades. This mixture right here is just garlic powder and onion powder. You guys have heard my spiels before on those two items or any kind of ground herb or seasoning. Make sure you buy the smaller bottles because they start to lose flavor the moment you open them. In about six months, you're gonna have more sawdust than you are actual flavor. Now, garlic powder and onion powder, I go through super fast, so I don't worry about it as much. But if you don't, make sure you get those smaller bottles. Give it the sniff test before you use it. Oh, I've got some on the counter. Just to make sure that it isn't totally bland. Pop that off to the side. Okay, so we've got our seasonings in here. The meat, as you can see, is already fairly even with those seasonings. I'm gonna take it a little bit more, and instead of really mixing it, I'm just gonna kinda crumble it together between my fingers. I've seen some folks take this mixture and put it into something like a KitchenAid with the paddle attachment, and their thought process is good. The problem is that overworks it and it changes the texture, and that can make the hamburger patty seem mealy or dry in your mouth. So we want to avoid that. You could also use any kind of seasoning you want. Taco seasoning, fajita seasoning, blackened seasoning, um, Cajun seasoning, anything that has seasoning on the end, even like plain old poultry seasoning, just because it says poultry doesn't mean you can't use it on, on beef, right? So we've got our meat mixture, super easy. The next thing we gotta do is form our burger patties. To do that today, I'm going to use a burger press, although, you don't need to have a burger press. You can do this without it. But there is one key element to a burger press that I want you to be aware of. It is all of these grooves. See those grooves? These grooves help the meat create little pockets so that when it's cooking, naturally it seizes up and it goes like this. And what home cooks do is that makes kind of like this welt right in the middle of the hamburger patty. What's your tendency? I know you're saying it in your head. You take the spatula and you press it down because you don't want this welty hamburger. But when you do that, what do you lose? 
all the juices and the flavor right out of your burger. But if we give the meat a place to go when it seizes, like these grooves, you won't have that. You'll have a perfectly flat burger at home. This also helps me make even sizes. I'm gonna spray it too, just cause you know, things get stuck and it's fine. Keeping this cold can also help with it not sticking, but I didn't have time for that today. Now I've got a piece of meat and this is a giant piece of meat. I don't need that much. Okay. And I'm gonna throw it right on into this press. If it overflows, it overflows. It's perfectly fine. And you press it right on in there. You might wanna fill some of the pockets. It's okay if it doesn't fully form out. These are homemade burgers. The, you don't want them perfect. You want them to have unique edges and ripples. If you wanted perfectly uniform burgers, you would have bought some at the store. But you didn't. Okay, so here we go. We've got our two burgers with little grooves included. Plop them right out there onto a parchment or wax paper lined sheet. I'm gonna finish with the rest of this meat, but you can either at this point put them back in the fridge, which I do suggest because all of those fats, even though they weren't out in the air for so long, are still warmer than they were. And in order for them to congeal, to hold the burger together while we cook it, we want them to be cold. If you've made a really, really fat burger for somebody or somebody really likes it rare, I'm gonna tell you to put that burger patty in the freezer. Outside will cook faster than the inside. Inside will stay nice and rare and pink. There you go, perfect burger temperatures. Okay, let me finish doing these burger patties and we'll come right back when we're ready to put them in the skillet. Now we are going to get these babies going. The first thing you need is a really good cast iron skillet. I cannot emphasize that enough. These are great. Once they are well seasoned, they are essentially nonstick. I'm not even gonna put any oil in here. They hold heat really well. They distribute heat really well, which might be an even more important element than just holding heat well. So I don't have any hot or cold spots throughout the pan. You wanna get this super, super piping hot. I wanna hear that that sizzle as soon as it hits the pan. We just added a fifth S to our 4S philosophy and it is the senses. So I want to smell it hit the pan and I wanna hear it hit the pan. And then lastly, I'm gonna see it turn brown. So what we're going for here is actually a nice crust on the outside of the beef patty. Most people are like, ooh, I don't want it burned. I'm not talking about burning it. I'm talking about browning it. And when you brown ground beef properly, it creates little flavor bombs. It changes it chemically. It creates an acid that takes it from one flavor to another. And that other flavor is exactly what you're looking for. And if it's seared at a high enough heat, all of the juices and all of the flavors stay compactly inside of the burger instead of leaking out. We've done all this work to make these great burger patties. It's not a lot of work, it was actually pretty easy. But you don't wanna ruin them now. This is nice and hot, I can feel it. I can feel it hitting my face. So we are going to go ahead and plop our burgers in. So the next, hear that? Ah yeah, baby. Fit this, that's what we were going for. Yeah. I'm not gonna talk over the sizzle, let's just really embrace all that is going on right now with these delicious burgers, making some major, let's call them browning points. Get it? Is that a brownie points? It's browning points in the cast iron. Okay, I just flipped these burgers. Let me show you what I've got going on here. Can you see that? Can you see, we're gonna call it a bark. That's what it's called. This bark on the burger, that is not burn. That is deliciousness. That is flavor about to come into your mouth, okay? So whatever you do, resist the urge to push them down. And as you notice too, because we have those little grooves, they're flat. That's what I forgot to tell you. If you are making burger patties at home without a mold, what I want you to do is take the burger patty and make a well in the center of it. And when you do that, then it'll seize together and that well will close and you'll have a flat burger patty. Okay, foodie friends. So I'm gonna carefully, probably not safe, move that out of the way. Take them off the burner. 
put them onto the counter. As you can see, mm, that brown, yes, brown. Okay, gorgeous, gorgeous brown. Burgers, they have a mind of their own. Okay, they're cooling off a little bit. So the next step is super important. Do not skip it. We've done all of this work to season, to brown, to make sure it's juicy. The last step is to let it rest. Let them rest, foodie friends, let them rest. So I'm going to take them over here and put them onto a tray. Same one I had the raw ones on, just swapped out with aluminum foil. Let them rest for four to five minutes. They won't get cold. I promise you, they will still be nice and hot when you go to put together your burger. It'll be perfectly fine. So the next question is, while we wait, we'll chat about how long to cook them for. How long you cook it is based on what temperature you like it and how big the burger patty was. These are some pretty substantial burgers, so they probably need, a, need close to like three or four minutes per side, even for a medium rare. Other patties, like my kids' burgers, that will be more like a smash burger, really thin, probably only need about one to two minutes per side, depending on how hot your pan is and how they like them cooked. My best advice to you is to have a digital thermometer out so that you can do an internal reading. Remember about carryover cooking though. Carryover cooking means that they're going to rise approximately five degrees Fahrenheit while they are resting. So if your goal is 160, remove them from the pan at 155 and they'll come up to 160 while they're resting. The only thing left to do is assemble our burgers. So really there's only one more question. What do you like on your burger? And I wanna hear it. I want you to put your favorite burger toppings in the comment section of this video. We have our gorgeous burger patty. You see that there? Look, no juice falling onto my bun, not making it soggy because we let it rest. Oh, that's good, it's really good. I am basic when it comes to burgers because you know what? A really good burger patty doesn't need much more. So I'm just gonna do, <laughs> my kids would tell me that the ketchup farted and then we'd all giggle because I'm like still six inside and a little bit of mustard, shaking it good. I just like a couple of dop, 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 dollops of mustard. Okay, sesame seed brioche bun. And there you go. I might do some red onion on it, but then I have horrible breath and I have to take my kids to gymnastics tonight, so that's not gonna happen. Anyway, delicious burger by Jess. From my kitchen to yours, have a fabulous day.